Hello, I'm Craig from Carshalton Advisory. This tutorial series covers the Excel 2019 Expert Curriculum. Download the file linked in the description and let's work through it together as we start our journey with Section 1.1, Managing Workbooks. I'm a Chartered Financial Analyst, a Certified Advanced Financial Modeler, and a Microsoft Office Master with over 30 years experience in Excel. Professionally, in addition to consulting, I've been an investment banker, worked in equity research, was part of an in-house mergers and acquisitions group, and most recently was manager of financial modeling for a firm with more than $18 billion in annual revenues. My goal with this series is not only to prepare you to easily pass your exam, but to give you real-world tips and techniques to ensure your proficiency. Let's get started. To begin, we're going to open the Excel Expert 11A workbook. So I have the folder selected. I'm going to double click on the file name I'm in interested in. Let's get that set up so we can see it. All right, and what we need to do is to save this as my macros in a macro enabled format. So for save as, there's a few ways we can do this. And as you go through this series with me, you're gonna see that I'm going to be a stickler on using the keyboard as much as possible. For these early videos, we'll do some of the mouse work as well, but uh, eventually it'll be almost strictly keyboard for you. So we can save as a few different ways. Uh, the least convenient way to do it is to go into the file menu and then select the Save As option on the taskbar on the left. Alternatively, a lot of you will have a Save As already uh, up in your Quick Access Toolbar in the upper left-hand corner of your Excel. You could click that as well. Now, when we hover over that, you'll notice that we have Save As and then brackets F12. So it's giving us a clue to what our shortcut key is. Now, I'm not going to ask you to memorize a lot of keyboard shortcuts, but this is one that you're going to want to know. So let's hit F12 and that's gonna bring up our save as uh, dialog box. So what we wanna do is change the file name to my macros. And then what we need to do is change it into a macro enabled format. So you'll notice that the type that's automatically specified is an Excel workbook. We're gonna click here and we're gonna go to the next item down the list, which is an Excel macro enabled workbook. So once we do that, we're gonna click save and now you'll notice at the top, our file is now called My Macros and shows me as being saved. Now what we're going to do is open the Excel Expert 11B workbook and then enable the macros. So again, to open, there's a few ways that we can do it. We can click on File and select Open. Up in the top Quick Access Toolbar, we can select the Open, uh, which looks like an opening file folder. Or we can use the shortcut key, which is going to be Control-O which goes into our open dialog. I'm gonna browse, and here is my directory, my folder that has my files in it, and I'm gonna double click on that Excel 11B file. And once it's open here, we will bring it here so everyone can follow along. And then we're gonna enable the content. So what's happened is Excel has spotted that there are macros in this file, and it's giving us a warning. Before it just starts making those macros available to us, it's gonna say, hey, are you sure you wanna do this? Some macros can be malicious, so you don't necessarily wanna have every macro and any document that you receive uh, run right away. You wanna make sure that you're, you feel secure with them and that they're not gonna cause damage to you or to your systems. In this case, I'm gonna click this enable content. Now, the next thing we need to do is to open our Visual Basic Editor. Uh, so I'm gonna do something quick here. Um, you'll notice in my menu at the top here, I do have Developer, and I suspect that some of you who are following along with this are not gonna have the Developer tab available. So let's resolve that for you first off. So in order to do that, we're gonna go to File. We're gonna go down to the bottom and click Options. Once we're in Options, if we go down to Customize Ribbon, which is about halfway down, once we're into this customized ribbon, we can look over here on the right where the main tabs are. You'll notice one of these is developer. If you don't see developer, this box is probably unchecked here in the middle. Now, once you click developer and click OK, you'll see the developer tab available for you now in the menu at the top in the, in the ribbon. So now that the developer tab is available to us on our ribbon, what we want to do is open the Visual Basic menu here. Uh, so once I've clicked on developer, you're going to see Visual Basic here over in the upper left. 
Uh, and then all we need to do is either click on this or hit Alt F11 to bring that up. Now, because I love keyboard shortcuts, I'll show you a couple different ways to do that. We can navigate it with the mouse like we just did. The next thing I could do is hit Alt, which opens up now all these hotkeys will take me to each of the ribbon tabs. I'm going to hit L for developer. Once developer is open, it now gives me the key to press to access any of the other commands. In this case, I want Visual Basic, which would be V. Alternatively, I could also go directly to Visual Basic Editor just by hitting Alt and F11. So let's do that right now. If you use macros a lot, you'll be very familiar with this, or you'll get very familiar with this. So now my Visual Basic uh, is open, and my editor is open here. And so what you'll see in the project area here are the three files that are currently open. Two of them you will recognize, and the third will probably be new to you. So the first off, it tells me that the Excel 11B file is open, and that's the one we were just in. Next is the My Macros file that we started off this uh, session with. Lastly is a new one for you, and this is called the Personal Macro Workbook. And uh, once you get familiar with the Personal Macro Workbook, you'll, you'll wonder how you used to uh, live without it. It's very handy, and we're going to start to get comfortable with it here in just a second. So what we've been asked to do is to copy the macros from the 11B workbook and place them into the My Macros workbook, and then we'll close the Visual Basic Editor. All right, so uh, we can see our file here. We're gonna expand it by clicking this plus here. Uh, the macros themselves are in this section called Modules. Okay, so if we open up Modules, uh, there's our Module 1, and what we can do, I'll double click on this, and you'll see in this window here now, uh, it shows us the actual VB code for the macros that exist. So these are a couple simple, um, macros, uh, one just prints a, a script that says hello world, uh, and the second is going to uh, apply a particular style onto the cell that's selected. So in order to copy that into the My Macros workbook, it, it's quite simple. Um, we can actually take this module and drag it down into our My Macros workbook. So that's one way of doing it, and now you'll see that this module also exists in the My Macros file, and it's the exact same. The other way we could do it, if the module already existed, you can actually just cut and paste. So you can select this, you can copy it, and paste it into the module for the document that, uh, that you're wanting to adjust. But in this case, it didn't have the module. We could just drag that right down, and uh, now those macros are available in this alternative workbook. All right, so let's close this. And once it's closed, we're going to go back to our My Macros workbook. So let's toggle to that uh, other file here. So here is My Macros, and what we want to do is save it. So we haven't made any changes to this other than kind of behind the scenes. We've, we've added some macros to it, so let's hit Save here. And so now we have My Macros uh, saved. So now that this is saved, What we're going to do is we're going to, going to record a simple macro, and we're going to store it in the personal macro workbook. All right, so to record a macro, let me add the ribbon back here for you. Uh, we'll hit Show Tabs and Commands here, and then it might make it a little easier to follow along. So there are a couple ways of recording a macro, just like everything in Excel. There's never just one way to do it. Uh, you're going to have to find a way that works best for, for your experience and for your workflow. Uh, but there's a few ways to record a macro. Uh, one way is to go into our developer tab. So I could use my mouse and click developer, or I could hit alt and L and get to the same place. Once I'm in developer here, uh, I'm going to see this option to record a macro. So I could either click this with my mouse or hit the R key in order to record that macro. Alternatively, uh, there is a shortcut on our desktop or on our window. Uh, in the bottom left hand corner and all we would need to do in order to record a macro is to click down here so you may find this an easier option for you so let's click this and once we have the first thing that comes up is there's a new window that's asking us if we want to record excuse me it's telling us we're going to record a macro uh, and so uh, they don't give us a name and we could leave it as macro one uh, but it's always a good idea to have a descriptive name for whatever you're going to record. Uh, and so we are going to call this uh, input format. 
and we will create a shortcut key for it, which will be, uh, you'll hit Shift and I. And then in order to run this macro, all we need to do is just hit uh, Control, Shift, and I, and this will run for us. We're going to store this macro in the personal macro workbook. So this is the important part here. So you could either have it in this workbook, and then it will only be available to us in the My Macros file. But what I prefer with a macro like this is to put it in our personal macro workbook. And now, whatever workbook that we open up uh, from Excel, uh, we're going to have access to these macros. Even if the file itself isn't macro enabled, the personal macro book is going to be available to us in the background. Uh, and for our description, what we're going to say is it applies the input uh, style to the selected cell. And then we're going to hit OK. Now, as soon as I hit OK, our macro is going to start recording. Uh, and so I'm going to warn you right now, once you start recording a macro, always remember to stop recording a macro. Uh, a total uh, rookie mistake is to start recording a macro and then you forget about it. And then 20 minutes later, you realize it's running and Excel has been recording everything that you've been doing for that whole time. So let's click OK here. Uh, in our bottom left-hand corner, I do have this square that shows up now, uh, which uh, is how I can stop the macro from being recorded. Now, what Excel actually records isn't like a, a video of how you move your mouse. Um, all it does is it records every click or command that you enter into Excel. So in this case, I'm not going to click any cells because what I want is this macro only to work on a cell that's already selected. If I was to click... Excel would say, oh, he's gone to sell I-20 and he wants to uh, have uh, a change made to that particular cell. So in this case, we're not going to click anything. All I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Home tab. I'm going to go into Styles. And there is an option here that says Input. Now, this is an ugly input, and we may change this later. But let's click on that, and you'll see this cell now changes to that particular format. Once that's complete, I'm going to hit the stop button. And we've just recorded a very simple macro. Uh, all that happens is whatever cell is selected, the input style gets applied to it. So let's uh, let's quickly test it out here. So I'm going to click my uh, mouse someplace else, and I'm going to hit Control-Shift-I. And sure enough, there is my uh, highlight. My cell has been now changed to the input format. Let's see if it works with a uh, larger selection. And sure enough, now all of these cells are in the input style. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to return to our Visual Basic Editor, and we're going to copy the macros from the My Macros workbook into the Personal Macro workbook. All right, so to get into our uh, Visual Basic Editor, we could use our Alt keys and go L and then V, or we can hit Alt F11, which is the direct shortcut that we learned. Uh, so now we're back in here. We see our three files here in the upper left, and what we've been asked to do is to move the macros that are in My Macros uh, and copy them into the Personal Macro Workbook. Uh -huh. So if we go into uh, the Personal Macro Workbook first off, so let's open up Module 1. And in Module 1, here is the macro that we just recorded. So when it said record a simple macro, uh, this is about a simple a macro as you can absolutely record. Uh, basically, all it's saying is apply selection style equals input uh, to whatever cell is already highlighted. So that's a very straightforward macro. Uh, but what we're going to do is to copy the macros from the My Macros workbook into it. And so we see the module here from My Macros here on the left. There's two ways we could do this. Um, we could just drag this module down into Personal. And so now what you'll see is that there's now two modules. Uh, there's module one, which is the macro we just recorded. There's also now this, what they've called module 11, which is just a module one and then another one added onto it because they had the same name. If I was to open this module 11, uh, what you'll see is this is the same information as what was here in uh, module one from our My Macros workbook. So this is the one that we copied over. They're both identical. And so now all of these macros are also available in our personal macro workbook. So we'll close the Visual Basic Editor. And we're back into our My Macros tab. 
And then our last step for this section is to unhide our personal macro workbook and then hide it again. So what happens, that personal macro workbook is actually open right now. We just can't see it. And we can actually control that uh, with the personal macro workbook, but also any workbook that we have available. And what we're going to do is access that through the view menu. So, you know, old fashioned us, we could have just used our mouse and clicked view at the top. Uh, but now that we are becoming Excel experts, we're just going to hit alt and then W selects the view uh, tab of our ribbon. And what you'll see over here is the hide and unhide commands. OK, so in order to view a worksheet that is already hidden, we're going to select U for unhide. OK, and now it pops up with a dialog box that shows us which workbooks are currently hidden. So in this case, there's just the one. We're going to click OK. And so now we have a new blank workbook that opens up. Now, the personal workbook really isn't much to see. There's, there's no actual data in any of the cells. All it is is kind of a, a personal collection of macros that you have running anytime you have Excel going. Um, so there's really nothing to see here other than for you to know that it's available. So now let's hide this again. And with my keyboard, I'm going to hit Alt and then W to go to the view uh, tab of the access ribbon. And then I'm going to select H for hide, which is right here. And as soon as I do that, that particular workbook has now disappeared. Now it's not closed. It's still running, but we can no longer see it or have to worry about clicking on it. Now that doesn't just apply to the personal macro workbook. I can actually hide any workbook that I want. And sometimes I've done this accidentally and I've, I've wondered where it's gone to. And then I always remember to check unhide here in the view. And sometimes I've uh, toggled it off for whatever accidental reason. And that wraps up the first batch of selections here for section 1.1. So we're about 15 minutes into this first video now. Why don't we take a break at this point? Make sure that you like and subscribe so that you'll be aware when I get the second part of this Section 1.1 video series completed. Thanks for watching. This is Craig with Carshalton Advisory.